issues that we had over the past couple of years solved, as you can see. So uh, it's great to see everybody here in Sacramento at MUS 2018. This year we're celebrating 20 years of this show. Uh, every year in the last 20 years, Sacramento Amiga Computer Club and a whole bunch of sponsors have uh, staged this show. And so it's great to see all of you here. I'd like to thank our sponsors to begin with, um, and not in no particular order. Uh, so we'd like to thank Aeon uh, Limited, uh, coming to us from New Zealand, who has sponsored the show. Amiga Kit, uh, coming to us from Cardiff, Wales, who has sponsored the show. Uh, Amiga Users of Calgary, from Calgary, Canada, who has sponsored the show. Uh, Amiga on the Lake, first time sponsor. Real Dealer has things for sale. In fact, a lot of things for sale. It's 5,000 computers, all kinds of accessories. Go talk to them. Uh, and I mean, West Broadcast, Bill Orsari, who is uh, doing the broadcast for us, has every year for the past 20 years. And uh, then we have our club, the Sacramento Amiga Computer Club, sponsoring as well. And also a financial sponsor this year, Hyperion Entertainment, uh, has sent their uh, invoice in. So uh, we thank them as well. Uh, I'd like to uh, say hi to everybody who is uh, watching us online, and uh, thank you for coming in. Uh, it really is uh, better if you come to the show. I know if you're in the middle of uh, a foreign country and can't get here, uh, we understand that, and we try to make this as good as we can. Uh, but really, the conversations that we have are probably the most important part of the show. So uh, when you can come, we would love to see you, and uh, we'll keep this feed going as well as we can during the day. So, uh, and also, uh, some of our exhibitors, we have the Bay Area Retro Computer Club here, uh, a new club that is doing all forms of retro computers. Uh, we have uh, Infocentries over here, who this year is selling uh, new old stock tank mice, if you need one. We have about 40 of them. Uh, and uh, so come see us for that. Uh, we have the media users and apps, Paul Sadler and Alex Carmona from uh, points uh, separate, but uh, coming together for Andrew West. Uh, we have Sat Guy back there, Michael Salcedo, uh, Chris Brenner, uh, bringing his stuff to us, also another Sat member. Paul Rosendis in the corner, you're going to want to see him for A4000 replica boards and uh, also some 3D printed accessories. Uh, and I've probably forgotten somebody, but it, it gives you an idea of the scope of the show. Uh, this year we have 14 exhibitors, and uh, it's probably our largest show in many years. So it's good to see all of you here and all of you online, and uh, we hope to see you in Sacramento whenever you can make it. At the end of this show, we'll be announcing the dates for next year's show, which are already booked. So I just wanted to let you know that, so that if you need to make plans a year in advance, you can. Um, and at, at this point, we are going to have uh, our opening presentation. <coughs> I think that Aaron Smith is back there getting ready to do something. Uh, and he is our uh, our dealer, uh, one of our dealers coming in. Him and Amita Kip have things for sale here. So uh, come on up, Aaron. And uh, let's give him all a hand. Am I good? I, sounds like I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, welcome to Amy West 2018. My name is Aaron Smith. I'm the financier and uh, operations manager at Amiga on the Lake. And uh, Mr. Jeffrey Yoder is back there underneath, like the middle of the bowling ball and our logo. He is our CEO. <laughs> And uh, he's an uh, uh, electronic engineer, and uh, so we are Amiga on the Lake, but there is one other person I'd like to highlight, which is Jamie Krieger right here. He kind of rounds out the Amiga on the Lake family. Jamie is uh, a developer for us. He does a fantastic work. He does great work. And I'll let you take this. Oh, okay. All right, which, which one do I click here? To the left or the right? Uh, left. I'm sorry, right. To the right. Okay. Give it some seconds. So, the first thing that I would like to say is, uh, you know, I've heard lots of things about the folks that put Amy West on. And uh, I can tell you for sure now that I'm here in person, these guys are 
this could not and would not happen without them. I mean, if I, I could go, I could wax eloquent about this for a few minutes. These guys are really hard workers. This this event would never be possible without their hard work and dedication, all for free. These guys are fantastic. Please, please give these guys a great hand. Okay, on to the more interesting part. We're stressed out. We're nervous. We're we're rocking and rolling with the Amiga, and uh, I'm going to try to follow the notes that I had in my head. If I don't do a good job with that, well, hey, we're too excited about the Amiga to worry about those little details. So, um, the presentation that I'm going to give this morning is not about Amiga on the Lake. It's not about Amiga on the Lake at all. What it's about is us as a community. And uh, we're going to have a candid conversation, and an important conversation, and I think that you're going to enjoy it. I know for one, I'm really excited to, to be here to do this today. Last year, 2017, we had been in business for a year, and we wanted to be here, but I had something come up, and Jeff had something come up, and we couldn't be here. In retrospect, the evidence that I was going to deliver last year is even better this year, so I'm really excited to, to, to share what I've got to say with you guys. But I wouldn't be a great marketer or a good business guy. There are a couple of things that I'm going to talk about with the vegan lake, and I'm going to get that out of the way right at the top. All right. Um, we have a few new products. Um, we have some products that we just had, didn't have a chance to get on our store because we're panicked and all that stuff to get here. Um, the first product that we have is um, it's a USB keyboard that converts your Commodore 64 into a USB keyboard. And it also has a joystick ports on the side of it. So you plug, that, you plug your keyboard into this device, you plug that into a Raspberry Pi, use your, your game, you know, your joysticks, and you're good to go. We've got, uh, we've got two models of that. We also have two models of that uh, iteration in the uh, uh, Amiga 500 and in the Amiga 600 and 1200. We have um, a really fancy GoTech, future, future-proof GoTech device that's developed by Kipper 2K. And if you haven't heard, we're the exclusive dealer for Kipper 2K worldwide. So we're really excited to make that relationship happen with him. Um, so the GoTech we don't have online, but now all these products we have here today. Um, fantastic GoTech and uh, Kipper 2K is also part of this organization and this is the first product that they're releasing is called the Amiga Accelerator Alliance. And the first product is an Amiga Accelerator board. It has eight megs of memory, zero weight state. It, it has a, a, a compact, or not compact, but sorry, um, an SD card to plug in. It has um, uh, digital audio out. We have a cable that goes to a 3.5. You have your nice speakers, you plug it in, you're good to go. And it also has an RJ45 does Ethernet connector, all in one card. It's a really reasonable price. We have them there. And uh, other than that, there's a couple other odds and, uh, odds and ends and things. Um, of course, we have uh, um, Paul Resendez's great motherboard that he you know, put a lot of labor and love in to make. We donated to that. We made uh, boards with him. Fantastic quality. They're great. You can get them from either one of us because it's all going to the same, same guy. So we're really excited to have that here as well. Um, I'm going to show you two products real quick that we don't have here. We tried to get them here. We're a little, you know, we got to work to get these things all, 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 all fine-tuned. Okay, this is basically the sticker for one product. This is, uh, it's called the C-Series Power Plant Power Supply by 5344 Systems. This is for Commodore 64s. Commodore 128s has over voltage protection and it has every every bell and whistle that you want if you're a retro computer owner, and we're retro computers on owners, so we, we get that. It has, um, you got a power switch on the front and an LED. Both the cables come out the back. They're both long, one that plugs in the wall, one that plugs in the back of the computer, so you can have it up on a shelf instead of, you know, going under the desk. But if you need to do that, it's really simple. Uh, everything's, in, if you need to get to it, the switch is on one side. Uh, it's also built um, for overseas. So there's a little switch on there. It works with anything that you plug into it pretty much anywhere in the world. So that's the first product. The second product is, of course, the A-Series Power Plant Power Supply um, from 5344 Systems. And these, of course, for your Amigas, maybe 500, 600, and 1200. And believe me, you can put accelerator cards and all types of stuff in your 1200, and this baby does the job. And it's built the same way. It's, it's user-friendly. It'll work anywhere in the world. And uh, two cables on the back. One in the wall, one in the computer, long enough so that it's being put on a shelf and you get a nice power switch. 
And of course, there's really fancy logos. <laughs> a little delay, but it's working. Okay, now here's, a, here's an interesting uh, thing that I want to present. Now this is a first um, for Classic Amigas. We all have been dreaming about this day, and it is almost here, but it kind of is here, and very, very shortly you're going to be able to buy this. Now what am I talking about? Well, the A1200 cases from A1200 not are great. They're fantastic. I don't know how many of you here have them. Really well built. There's a lot of excitement about that. We have the A500 case that's uh, coming very shortly, and I'm sure there's lots of excitement about that as well. Wouldn't it just be nice if today, this afternoon, you said, you know, I'm going to go to Amiga show, and I'm going to buy a brand new keyboard for Amiga 500. Or I'm going to buy a brand new keyboard for my Amiga 1200. Wouldn't that be great? I mean, that'd be fantastic, right? Well, that's happening. Now, I mentioned that I'm the exclusive dealer for Kipper 2K. And Kipper 2K has done this. And there's a couple levels of the product. And let me take the time to explain it to you. Number one, you know the membranes. We have the membranes on the keyboards. Well, the membrane is replaced with a very thin PCB board. On that PCB board is a PIC microchip that is built to control the keyboard. Like the Amiga 500, you have the controller chip. That does the job. On the Amiga 1200, you don't need that because it's on the motherboard. But that microchip serves another purpose, but we'll get to that. So you have a, you replace a membrane with this. And it's a little snappier, and it's a little, it's a little nicer than the membrane, and it's fantastic. But let's turn this into a keyboard. No problem. You buy Cherry MX switches, or Oppmann switches, which, you know, are basically a knockoff. And you buy your switches, and then there's a little laundry list, do we call it, of all of the, the sizes of the keycaps that you need. Because keycaps, of course, come in different sizes. You know, little keyboards are a little smaller. And some of those aren't, aren't, aren't standard. So there's a few of them that you get when you get the custom sizes. You just go get your keycaps, you put it on, and there's another plate that comes with it, and you put it together, and voila, you have a brand spanking new Amiga 500 keyboard. And this is gonna happen very, very, very soon. And you also have a new Amiga 1200 keyboard. You can buy the membrane and use it for that, and then later on say, hey, I want to upgrade, now I want to go and make this a full-blown keyboard. Now the membrane is the same for both systems. And there's a connector on it that connects to your, your 1200 your keyboard, and one that connects to your 500 on the keyboard. Now here's the USB thing that I mentioned. This is a great feature. You can also use this brand new keyboard on a Raspberry Pi or anything in the world that you want to use it on. Because not only does it connect to the Amiga 500 and the Amiga 1200, it also connects to USB. So we finally have a brand new keyboard for our classic Amigas. And that's not all, but I'll let Kipper explain the rest of the story. After my presentation, he's like, when my presentation's done, shoot me an email, because I'm excited to update this. <laughs> Kipper2k.com. It's K-I-P-P-E-R, two, number two, K.com. And uh, Kipper has a nice article there, and he's got a video, and, and you, he, t he takes you through the process of, of his development of this board, and it's really exciting. So that is a cool announcement we're really, really excited to make. And, and by the way, for those people that are watching at home, I want to also tell you guys that we're the exclusive worldwide dealer. But this particular product is an exception. He has a guy over there that is actually going to manufacture these boards in the UK and ship them to customers there. And when we get that information, we'll share that on our website, and we know he will too. Now the cool thing about that is, is when you ship products, it costs money. And you buy products from overseas, you pay, you know, the, of course the shipping is included in the cost, and then you ship it to your customer, the customer kind of ends up paying for shipping twice. So guys in the UK and in, in Europe, they're not gonna have that problem because it's actually gonna be manufactured over there and sold over there, so that's a great deal. I wanted to, to highlight that. So, I'm trying to follow notes in my head. I'm not sure how well I'm doing. Now, you notice the logo in the lighthouse in the background there. That's the Oswego Lighthouse. That's where we're from. We're from Oswego, New York. We're about 45 minutes north of uh, Syracuse, New York, if you happen to know where that is. Right across the lake from us, of course, are the great folks in Canada. But you notice there's a bunch of waves and a bunch of turmoil going on in the picture, right? <laughs> well, I'm hoping after this presentation, and I'm hoping after some things uh, uh, come to light, 
things are going to look a little bit more, a little bit more, ah, a little bit more serene and a little bit more calm because that's what we need, right? Well, like I said, I'm really excited to be here. And uh, now I'm not talking about Amiga and the Lake. Let's talk about Amiga OS 4. Let's talk about the past. Let's talk about right now. And let's talk about where you're going because, folks, this is, this is what I'm excited to share with you today. The three essential ingredients needed to build a new computer ecosystem. And I'm going to belabor the point a little bit and I'm going to read it again. The three essential ingredients needed to build our or a new computer ecosystem. Just, just stop and think about what I'm, what I'm asking you to think about. Just think about that for a moment. And of course I'm going to refer back to this. Our mission statement, right? Pretty simple. We are here to grow Amiga OS 4 user base and to sell and support the Amiga one line of computers. Simple, right? Hey, cool, they're doing that, but I'm sure some of you have read that and heard me say that and thought, what does that mean? Yeah, you're gonna grow the market share, but to what end? I mean, what, what, are you, what are you really trying to achieve? Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna achieve. I said I'm gonna have a candid conversation. Quite frankly, we wanna grow Amiga OS 4 out of the hobbyist market into a semi-legitimate alternative to Windows, to Linux, to Mac, and ultimately, we want it to be a legitimate alternative to those platforms. And I can imagine what you're thinking, but I don't have to imagine because I know what you're thinking. Many of you at home, and many of you here, you know and deep in your gut you love the Amiga, and wouldn't that be thrilling? Wouldn't that be uh, just a ride of enjoyment and excitement to see the Amiga start making some real progress? That would be so cool. That would be so fun, right? The Rebel Alliance won a couple battles in the last couple of weeks, really excited. We would love it. Now, I think this is a, a dichotomy, because I think half of you really think that. But there's a bunch of you that are thinking, this guy, he's out of his mind, right? He's got to be crazy. Well, I don't think so. I'm going to use a couple of quotes to, uh, to back up with, uh, where I'm coming from with this. The first is President Calvin Coolidge, probably my favorite president from the 20th century. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful people with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is filled with educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved, and will always solve the problems of the human race. Well, we're not trying to solve that big of a problem, so we're just trying to make, make the Amiga grow. So I guess we have 99.9% .9 of the work out of the way. <laughs> Now, a much more current figure is Larry Ellison, the founder and chairman of Oracle Corporation. Winning is a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing. Sure, there, sure there's talent, but there also has to be the will. Give me human will and the intense desire to win, and it will trump talent every day of the week. But this is the Amiga community. There's a pretty high level of technological know-how in this community. There's these folks, engineers, I mean, you know, you've come to the meetings, you, you know what goes on here. There's a really high amount of IQ and there's really dedicated engineer people that are great software guys, that are great hardware guys. So yes, we have passion. You have passion too, but we also have talent. So that's where I'm coming from. And I know that uh, people might think it's crazy. Hey, I'm happy to be crazy person you call crazy one year, maybe a few years later you call him a leader. We'll see what happens. Okay, total sales of Amiga One X5000. This is quantitative data. I see Trevor's panicking. Total sales, I'm not going to give away the number of sales. <laughs> but this is quantitative data about what we have done. We have really analyzed the sales of, of everything that we sell, particularly with the Amiga One uh, X5000, because that's really important to track this. And by the way, I do have at the bottom there uh, the USA and Canada. We do sell overseas, but for the purposes of, uh, of this presentation, we're only counting those systems that we've sold in the United States and in Canada. Okay, let's start with what is cool. Repeat customers, 48.9, and by the way, this is starting at day one. And day one, by the way, was October 8th. 
in 2016. So I think we've been in business two years and five days or something. So this is literally right up until today with every system we sold. 48.9% of customers, hey, they're repeat customers. They already have a machine that runs OS4, and now they're buying another one. No, 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 nothing bad there. That's all good news, right? Now, what's more interesting to us, of course, is 51.1% of all of the purchases that we have had, bar none, are new to OS4. That's great. I guess we could make an argument that, hey, OS4 seems to be growing. That excites us because that's what we're here for. It gets more impressive. Now, the top right corner is what really excites me. So again, 48.9% of our customers are repeat customers. Fantastic. That's great to have people that are dedicated, that are engaged, that are keeping, uh, you know, they're getting new systems. They love the machines. This is fantastic. Now, 26.5% are new to OS4 only. That's great. Because we all know there's a bunch of guys out there that wanted to get a machine and wanted to get a machine. Maybe their finances have changed. Hey, in the X5000, that's about $1,000 cheaper. If you buy it from me, you're going to like um, <laughs> I got to put the plug in. <laughs> um, less than the 1000 It's a great machine. It's a fantastic machine. So we're really, really happy about that. But I got to tell you, what really excites me is what I've pulled off because it's important to pull off. 24.6% of every customer we have that has bought a new computer, they're not only new to OS4, they've never owned an Amiga in their life. And even as I say this, I knew I was going to say this, I've done these numbers a bunch of times, even saying it out loud in front of you guys, it's like, did I make a mistake? I can assure you I have it because I thought, Jesus, did I, did I make an error, an obvious error, and I just, I have done these numbers like a multitude of times, and okay, I know what I'm doing. It's the same, and this has been consistent. This isn't like, in other words, this, this, this statistic didn't bump up in the last six months. This has been consistent from day one. This is, this is, un this is unbelievably great news, and it really is. This is cool. Okay. That's the first metric. Number two, and I didn't have the labels on here, the sales of Amiga OS 4.1 Classic. Now, there isn't new Pegasus 4s, there isn't a whole bunch of new classic stuff. In 2017, we're going to call that 100%. That's the top bar. Now, you notice we're not done with 2018 yet. We have, we have sold 184% more classics this year, and the year's not over with, than we sold last year. Actually, not just last year, but 2016 too. That is impressive. A little more evidence. People like this operating system and are intrigued and interested, and they want to dive in, and they want to use it. Now, I'm sure that, that, that many of you are aware that the QEME became available for the SAM 460. And when I, the day that that came out, I you know, changed the listing and I put the thing about QM, QEME there and I gave a, a link to where you could go and check it out and figure out how to use it. Now, what, again, this blew me away. In one week, in one week of having, and all I did was post it to Facebook. So it was a listing that had been there. No one, was no, no one would know that it had changed, right? I just put it on Facebook and in a couple of groups, and that's, that's all of the, quote, marketing that I did. In one week, in one week, we sold 500% more copies in one week than we have sold in the entire time we've been in business. More evidence. People like this operating system. Something's going on. Now, what we now know, number one, Amiga OS market share, OS4 market share is growing. Fantastic news. We've also learned why it's growing. And in conclusion, uh, what we know, what we have learned from that is we know who's buying these machines and we know how to market them, which is a, a magic formula. I mean, it's growing, but now we know who's buying it. We know what type of personnel is. We know the demographics of the people that are buying it. And as a result of that, and some other trickery, we know exactly how to market these people. So we can put a magnifying glass over this growth and we can amplify that properly. Okay. 
I think you forgot this. You remember? <coughs> the three essential ingredients needed to build our new computer ecosystem. The why. If you're going to build a new computer, as excited as you might be, and, and to, in today's day and age when folks do build new computers, which is rare, you're, they're, usually, they're usually talking the operating system. Not so much hardware. But it's when, at one point, they're excited, they're energetic, they're engaged. At one point, either them or a friend says, why are you doing this? Why this over the stuff that's out there? That's a great question, right? Well, we know the why. We know the why. Amiga OS 4. That's the why. That's the why things are selling. The why is out of the way because that was baked in the cake in 1985. Now I can explain why people are interested in Amiga OS, but this isn't really a marketing thing. So there is an answer to that question, but for the purposes of this discussion, the why is Amiga OS, and we don't need to worry about that. That's baked in the cake. RCRP, what in the world is that? That's my way of not wanting to type the whole words out, quite frankly. <laughs> that, st that stands for reasonable computer for a reasonable price. For the purposes of growing market share. That's the only reason, growing market share. A reasonable computer for a reasonable price. So this is number two in the list of three reasons. Now let's talk about this for a minute. Let's talk about a couple stories. In 1980, Commodore Computer came out with the VIC-20, right? And of course they did come out with the computer in 1977, the PET. They were part of the 77 Trinity, TRS-80, Commodore, and Apple. Well, something uniquely interesting happened in 1980. They decided to come out with the VIC-20. After one year of production, it was only in production for, well, it was in production for more than one year. After the first year, 1981, the VIC-20 reached a status that still remains today and is in the history books and will never be erased. What is that? That was the first computer, not personal computer, that was the first computer of any kind in the history of mankind that sold one million unit sales. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Part of the argument that I'm making here, obviously, is that was a reasonable computer for a reasonable price. One could argue that, hey, it wasn't maybe the most powerful, maybe it didn't have the best graphics, maybe that was the Atari, but based on price, that was a great reasonable computer for a super reasonable price, and it grew like wildfire. And when something grows like that, well, what happens? Those people want to play games. They want to run software. And the ecosystem, three reasons for an ecosystem, begin to emerge. Now, a second story is the Commodore Amiga 500. <laughs> that was a computer that propelled Commodore into what could have been a fantastic status. And particularly in Europe, a really great platform. Fantastic, that all of their unit sale volume numbers came from the Amiga 500. This is great, this is fantastic. Now, right here, I'm gonna end the qualitative part of my talk, and I'm gonna begin the qualitative talk of my, or part of my talk. So, a reasonable computer for a reasonable price sounds reasonable, I suppose. Uh, but this gets to a point where the candid conversation is gonna come in a little bit, and I think, I know that you're gonna agree with me, but people don't normally say this in public. But it's okay, no one's gonna get offended, but we need to talk about this. Back in 2002 was really in the era of the first new gen computer that ran Amiga OS. That was a long time ago. A lot of years gone by. Now here's a statement of fact. Not one of those computers in that entire legacy was a reasonable computer for a reasonable price. None of them. M many of them weren't only, none of them were reasonably priced. Many of them weren't even reasonable computers, as we know. Motherboards that weren't ready for prime time. Instead of being sent back to have a revision done, they went to market and they put it in the hands of customers. That's not reasonable. That's a bad move. And then supply chain problems. I've heard, I call them horror stories from many folks that waited between a month and a half to four and a half months to get their computer. Computers need to be available, right? We gotta get our hands on them. If they're a hot commodity and people wanna buy it, you gotta get it to them. 
That's important. No reasonable computer for a reasonable price. And I'm going to single out Mr. Dickinson's Amiga 1 X1000. Um, now let me say, say in his defense, I'm not attacking him. Of course I'm not. I love the guy. Um, you don't come on the market with a computer for $3,000. That's not going to grow market share. That's too much money. It's a reasonable computer. It's a great computer. I mean, part of the reason I started this company is because I was part of that wacky group of guys that I pulled out. That, that small percentage, that was the first computer Amiga they ever owned. That was the first Amiga I ever owned. And again, it was part of the reason I started this. And yeah, I talked to Trevor. He didn't, that wasn't his intention to build that computer to grow market share. He just wanted it. You know, really that, that was the reason. But you, you can't grow sales that way. You have to have a reasonable computer for a reasonable price. You have to grow the market. Now, the X5000, again, that's not a reasonable computer for a reasonable price. It's too much money. I can't tell you how many phone calls and emails I get. Jeez, I, I, I'm having a hard time convincing my wife. I want the computer. She won't let me have it. It's, it's too much money. It's a, it's a tough thing. It's a great computer, and we're, we're doing really well with it. I have to tell you, we're, we're, we're excited. But part of the reason we got into this was to sell what is the magic bullet, the Amiga A1222. Now that's a reasonable computer for a reasonable price. And that is going to do phenomenal for us. It really, really is. And not only is it a reasonable computer for a reasonable price, that is the first computer that we have had that is $550 US price, somewhere in that ballpark. That's like buying an iPad. That's unbelievable. That's fantastic. And it's going to make a world of difference. And to show you that we put our money where our mouth is, that was another part of the reason that we decided to jump in. We knew that the Tabor was out around the corner. So back in 2016, like literally the first month that we went live with our, with our store, we started piling away all types of stuff in preparation for the A1222. And I don't mind telling you, I'm bragging about it because I'm excited. We have spent thousands and thousands of dollars getting prepared for this. We've got components. We're ready to go. We're that excited, folks. This is going to make a huge difference. Now, I said qualitative. Well, the qualitative comes in the form of, what's a proxy number? Let's find a proxy number. What do I mean a proxy number? Well, what I mean is, you have Dell. You have, you know, uh, HP, you've got all these PC manufacturers, and we can look at them, but it's not an apples to apples, it's not oranges to oranges, it's not a univocal analogy, but we can learn something with the, with the stuff that we now, now, now know, and putting our, our heads into this, and I did hire a, a business graduate, a friend of mine, and he worked on this for me as well, a proxy number. <laughs> Let's take a look at Dell, for example. They have a multitude of computers that sell for around $500. And they have a bunch of computers to sell for around $2,000. But ask yourself the following question. One, how many of you guys know a regular person? By a regular person, I mean someone that's not like us, that's not really into computers. Right? We're a little creepy. But that's cool, right? I love being creepy. It's fantastic. Um, a regular person that's not, you know, oh, you're going to geek out tonight, OK? Um, they just use a computer's utility because it's a great utility, it's a tool, it's something to get work done. Someone that just uses a computer like that, I mean honestly, how many of you know even one person that is going to spend $2,000 on a computer in their life? Not too many, right? So the question comes into this, how many guys buy that $500 computer for every person that buys a $2,000 computer? Well, as it turns out, there isn't an actual answer, there's a range. And the best that we can tell with the work we put into this, it's about 35 to 45 to one. So 35 to 45 people buy a $500 PC compared to one guy that buys a $2,000 PC. That's a big difference. The next obvious question is what's our proxy number? How many A1222s are we gonna sell for every X5000? Give me the answer, let me hear it. Okay, uh, before I give you the answer though, when we market and we plan for business, 
we're very conservative about things, appropriately and properly. If we plan to sell and we, we, we well, we, we tweak the numbers and just we're very conservative about the numbers, that's okay because we can scale up and deal with it. If we come out with a high number and we build our marketing around that and we build our preparation behind that, you know, it's kind of like, uh, well, going off a cliff or falling off a hill is not going to be a good thing. And I'm also going to make a statement today on public, in camera, and we all know that uh, we know the unique community. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, it's only going to be a year or two and people are going to be like, you said that that was going to happen, and no one's ever going to let me forget it. Well, I know that. Here's the number that I'm going to give you, 9 to 1. We're going to sell 9 A1222s. Now, really, I, I believe higher than this, but for the purposes of business, we're being conservative. 9 to 1. Nine H one twenty twos for every one X five thousand. Okay, now here's the real statement that I'm that I'm going to make. Eighteen months after the A twelve twenty two goes on sale, eighteen months later, we will have grown our market share three hundred percent. Three hundred percent. That is highly significant. Even though we're a very small group of guys that are in, involved in this. 300% is He's talking to them. 300% is a huge number. That's a significant number. Now when I say market share, let me I'm a, I'm a great believer in, in clarifying terms and defining some definitions. What I mean by market share is obviously a person has to have a power PC machine that runs Amiga OS 4. Right? That's a given. Number two, they have to use their computer for at least an hour a month. So we know there's guys that have computers that turn it on every two or three months, and they're part of the market share. For, for the purposes of my statement, they're not. You have to use, you have to have a machine natively that runs OS4, and two, you have to use your system a minimum of at least an hour a month. Based on that, again, I'm making this statement in public, knowing that knowing the wrath of the Amigas will rain down on me like I won't even use the word. It's going to be awful. I'm not wrong. We're going to grow the market share 300% beginning when the A1222 comes out, and we're going to reach 300% market growth by 18 months. That's exciting. And I've been waiting for a long time to say this to you. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> What's number three? What's number three? Software. I don't know. I don't know how many of you have noticed that something really, really big has happened in the Amiga community. It happened about two years ago, and this is a really, really big deal. If this had happened back in the day, this would have been utterly earth shattered. But because it happened on the the down the downtrend of, uh, of the failure of Commodore and some other successive failures with the Amiga, and now our new gen guys are still here, the classic guys are still here as well, we're a much smaller community. But I think the largeness of what I'm thinking of right now just kind of escaped us. And when I say it, I hope that many of you think about that and say to yourselves, yeah, yeah, that really is a big deal. Now what I'm talking about is Hans de Reuter. He's the guy that brought the Amiga, first time in history, this is a first, a real 3D graphic subsystem. The first time. We never had that before. And going forward, that is absolutely and utterly pivotal. That's fantastic. Is Hans here, by the way? Oh, he's not here? He's around. Oh, yeah, he's not here in the room. Shucks, I was going to give him a hard time. Um, but I thank the guys at AEN and Hans, of course, for doing that because those two organizations came together and made that happen for us. That's a huge deal. And I bring this up because it is a first. Because I'm about to share with you a first. And this is a big first. Um, Jamie, yeah. why don't you sit in real quickly with you and, uh, and just show people what it is and if you have that uh, the little application you can show them that as well. Now, 
if you guys go to the software developer forum, um, well, not the, the, the developer forum, if you go to the Amiga Wiki and you look for the software at DevCon at this year, 2018, and it shows you how to, how to go ahead and, you know, look and see um, what you're, what's prepared, what you need to have. It shows you how to make sure your software developer kit's installed on your computer. You type a couple of things. You, you compile Hello World in a shell, and it's really simple. Underneath that, what you see is a bunch of a bunch of code, right? And that code is just to build the graphic user interface. You know how easy it is to build Hello World. You just did it in a shell. That's really easy. But all of this code is made to build just that little, little GUI that just says Hello and a quit button. And I talked to a bunch of the developers, and I said, how long would it take for you to do that by hand, but also have a menu system and uh, be able to click the, the, the box in the corner and close it? And I had a, 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 quite a range of numbers. I'm going to pick in the middle. That's going to take 38 minutes to make that happen. 38 minutes. When Jamie releases this fantastic piece of software, you can, good Lord, and happily trade in that 38 minutes for 15 seconds. Because that was about how long it was going to take me to talk while I was doing it. 15 seconds. And this software is going to be released um, on or before December 5th this year. So I'll talk more about that in a minute. But Jamie, why don't you? Uh... All right. But, uh, the, the build itself uh, here. Should I, pardon me, Jamie. Should I give uh, Jamie my, my headset? Yeah, no, I just realized that. Okay, well, hang on a second. In the meantime, while Bill's go, going ahead and doing that, does anyone have any, any quick questions that uh, I can answer? None of you? I just gave you a shocking presentation explaining all this great stuff that happens, and not one of you has a question? I don't believe it. When do you think uh, Tabor will come out? I know they. May is the uh, kind of generic. And well, of course, case. this question was going to come up. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's uh, repeat probably the question for your. Oh audience. yes, um, the the gentleman asked, "When is the tape board coming out?" And of course, that makes sense that that is the first question that someone was going to ask me. I don't know the exact date. He said, "Is it May?" It's probably somewhere around there. But folks, it's coming. I know. In fact, let me let me back up a little bit to tell you a, a, a story to put this in context. I could choke a rhinoceros. With, the, the, with a list of the names of people that have said to me, Aaron, please put me on the list. I want to be the first guy out of the gate to get the computer. Please, please, I want to make sure I get it. Hound me about it. Brother, you're on the list. Your name is right here. You're going to get a computer. No worries. And you know how, you know how it is when excitement builds up. And reach out. Is the taper out yet? Is it, is it out yet? So it's truly, and it's kind of funny, it's truly gotten to the point that probably between phone calls and emails, I probably get contacted almost 12 times a week with people that, that are on the list, and they know they're on the list, but they just can't help themselves. They're so excited that they're reaching out. And of course, that's, you know, quite frankly annoying, but hey, they're customers, and they're excited, and we're excited, so I don't get annoyed with that. That excites me and encourages me, because although it's not out yet, they're still committed and they're still excited. So, with that, and actually, let me let me get your question as well, sir. I was just going to ask you, in your opinion, if when you said a reasonable computer, if, if you made an imaginary number like 100% of functionality of OS 4 and the software on it that makes it a reasonable computer, how far of a gap do you feel like we have to where people could, could sit down on it, use it for that hour a month, and and not feel inhibited in any way? Uh, I'm going to answer your question in two parts. Uh, repeat the question. Uh, actually, yeah. Um, you know what, go ahead and talk to everybody and repeat the question just so that we can. So I just wanted to know um, if we said that when you mentioned a reasonable computer, if we said that 100% uh, allowed somebody to come sit down for that hour a month and not feel inhibited in any way transitioning from another reasonable computer that they've been using, if that's 100%, uh, what percentage are we at with OS4 right now, and, and, and what, what's it going to take to close that gap? All right, I'm going to answer your question in two parts. The first part is more what I mean when I say a reasonable computer for a reasonable price. I mean uh, both the combination of the operating system but the hardware. And, like, in other words, a, a computer that, for a reasonable computer, you have to get your hands on it. There has to be supply. 
To be a reasonable computer, it can't have a bunch of uh, hardware issues that weren't fixed. That you end up having to deal with the burden of that as a user. Um, and a reasonable computer is, you know, not the fastest computer in the world, but isn't the slowest either. It's a reasonable computer. And the reasonable price, we all understand the reasonable price. Now, the second part of your question, um, as far as 100% of the operating system compared to like what other people use, I'm gonna put your question off a little bit by saying that what we're talking about right now is gonna solve any problems or any gaps that you personally find. All right. Oh, Jamie, you good with a... Yeah, am I on? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, well, this is a very quick uh, a little sample here. Uh, I'm gonna be talking some more about this project and what it can do now and what its you know, promises at uh, noon. Uh, but for right now, to demonstrate uh, a little bit of what uh, Aaron was talking about, uh, I actually I don't have a pre-created uh, Hello World. Okay. I'm going to say it might be a little bit more complex. But I've created a project uh, with the software here. Was, while, while we were talking one day about uh, a to-do to -do list, right? So in a couple of minutes, we were talking about the to-do list. I just created. Oh, that's the, that's the project. Get so back to it in a second. Uh, this one here, this interface, which just is a list, you know, with a couple of buttons on there, and uh, it just, it took me uh, probably about 30 seconds. Uh, yes, and I'll, I'll tell you that story in a moment. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just very, very quick to put that together, so um, I'd love to be able to show you in a a live demo of exactly what that is, but I've been working so hard on the code um, right up to the last second that coming to the show, I extended it so far I broke the bill. Uh, so after presenting... See, that's what happens when you're Amigas. We're so excited about Amiga, we don't think about anything else. <laughs> and so at, uh, after presenting and talking about it at the uh, DEF CON on Friday, I then after we wrapped up on that, I set up my system and I hacked on it until quarter to four in the morning, and I fixed the bill. Uh, but that did not allow, allow me the time to fix the, uh, the software to show you the 2018 version of the GUI Builder and not the 14-year-old version that I originally had. So, uh, but just... So again, I don't want to go into a really big length on here, but basically... Uh, yeah, actually, Jamie, that's, pretty, that's good enough. If you would uh, be kind enough to pull off uh, that Annie West, um, the, the, the DevCon for 2018. The DevCon for 2018. Yeah, with the, the, the code and all that. So this little thing that he did, I called Jamie, because of course I know he's working on that. And, and hey, this is fully funded. This, all of the work that he's doing on this is fully funded by Amiga and the Lake. We're really, really serious about this. We're really excited about this. So I called Jamie and I, I, I showed him Sojo. I don't know if you've heard of that. That's a programming language. Uh, on, basically, it's on the Mac. And, uh, and I explained to him this little yeah. app. And I, I sent him a quick video with the guys talking about it. Literally, 30 seconds later, I get an email. I haven't even got done explaining to him like what it does. And he's like, he just asked me, he goes, oh, I just sent you an email. I'm like, well, you did? He sent me the application. He sent me the application. I opened the email up, I put it on a USB drive, I put it on my Amiga, double clicked it, and that thing he just showed came up. That's an application that was fully built in 30 seconds. So this is the power that we're talking about here. This is phenomenal. And I'm also gonna take the opportunity to talk about that gentleman behind Trevor Dickinson back there. His name is Kevin, and Kevin, I don't actually know your last name. What is your last name, Juan. sir? What is it? Juan. Juan. Kev Kevin, am I right? Juan, W-O-N-G. Wong, W-O-N-G. Kevin, sorry, I should have had that wrapped up ahead of time, but I'm so excited that, you know, I'm a love Amiga, so I didn't pay attention to the details. Kevin is also working on a development software, and the software that he's working on is, is, is fundamentally different. Um, he is working on Visual Studio and other mainstream uh, uh, IDEs that people use and have used, they use them for their careers, they use them all the time. Wouldn't it be nice to just use the development tools that these guys have been using you know, every day and all the time that they love, that they customize, that do the, they, they just love it, it's, it does what they love. Wouldn't it be nice to use that to develop for OS4? Of course it would, right? I mean, that makes sense. 
Well, Kevin has done, I mean, you guys can talk to him after the, after the show, and I, and I actually recommend that you do. He really has put a bunch of exciting work into what he's doing, a lot of, a lot of heavy lifting, and we're getting very, very, very close to that being done. So, and by the way, number three is developer tools. It really is. The why is out of the way. Number two is a reasonable computer for reasonable price for the purpose of growing market share. And ladies and gentlemen, you have to have developer tools. Without developer tools, you know, you have a great, awesome machine, you're really excited to use it. If a developer doesn't develop for it, I guess it really isn't cool to begin with, is it? Developers are really important. They grow our platform, and you never know what crazy stuff developers are gonna come up with. And to make better documentation, and better tools on the Amiga, and better methodology for guys that are programming for a living that wanna use what they wanna to use to develop, but they wanna do it on the Amiga, we have to cover all the gamuts. I'm here to tell you these gamuts are being covered. We got into this at the, at the, at the perfect time. The X5000 was just on the cusp of coming out, and we knew about it. We knew about the A1222, and immediately the, I began to think, these three things, these three things. Now since being involved in it, now we've had two years of sales, we now know what we only suspected before, but we were wrong in the wrong direction. We were wrong in what we suspected um, about growth, because the growth is more than we thought, which is a great thing to be wrong on, right? So I, I'm really overwhelmed and really excited. Now, uh, show him the, uh, oh, here's his editor, by the way. He, we, can, we can show this on the uh, left-hand side for you guys at home and you guys here. On the left-hand side is his editor. On the right-hand side is a fantastic, fantastic tool called Software Developer Kit Browser. And he is working on syntax highlighting. I mean, a lot of work is being done to this. And uh, it probably would only take Jamie maybe an afternoon to fix. He's been so excited and working on this really hard. It would probably take him an afternoon, quite frankly, to fix it. But we can't say, hey, come back you know, in five hours and we'll, and we'll show you because you know, it just doesn't work that way. But this is a great, great product, and it's coming out, and it's coming out soon, and it's going to be out again by December 5th, on or before December 5th of 2018. And, okay, how much? What's the price? Well, I wanted to give you a great analogy of prices, but I'm going to boil it down very simply. When you look at developer platforms on other systems, um, the prices range, you know, basically from $299 to, to $699 to you know, out of this world. But 299 to 699 is usually a, an entry price for, a, and you, I'm talking building professional, not something to build freeware, a professional system. And you end up paying that same price every year. Year after year after year. This isn't gonna work this way. The entry level price, in fact, what the early adopters is what we're gonna call it. What we're targeting is called um, ABD1, the Advanced Visual Developer. ABD 1.0. He's not at 1.0, but there's a number, like there's the, the editor, there's the GUI builder, there's a software developer kit browser, and there's some other tools. When all of those tools reach a certain height, he's calling the package 1.0. The early adopters are gonna be before that, and you're gonna have lots of functionality, and the, the, the updates are gonna be plentiful, and they're gonna be continual. So what are you gonna get? Well, you're gonna get right where he starts working, all the way up to one and past one, right up until just about before two. So you're in for the long haul and you're gonna get a lot of plentiful software um, updates and lots of functionality. Now, when 2.0 hits, you can buy it or you, or you can't buy it. If you buy it, it's gonna be about a 20% um, upgrade. Now, when, also when he reaches 1.0, then the price is $299. That's the regular standard price. So obviously buy the software when it comes out up until 1.0. It's $100 cheaper, it's a great deal. And then after that, if you decide to buy two, it's 20%, you know, about $60, to $60 to, to, for the base. And uh, maybe you skip it. Maybe you get busy in your life or you get, get sidetracked or something, something happens with it that takes you away from the beloved Amiga. Let's say you, you, you jump back in at 4.0. 20%, you're back in business. It's a very, very, very great deal. Very aggressive prices. We're really excited about this. And, uh, you know, in closing, there is something that I want to say, and a very heartfelt thing that I want to say to those of you at home, and of course to the great people at AMUS 2018. Time. 
Time is a precious commodity. You know, there's Bill Gates and there's Steve Jobs and these, you know, great people that, uh, that we look up to a lot of ways. There's one thing that we have in common with them, and that is we all only have 24 hours in a day. Time is a very precious commodity. Jeff and I do this part-time. Jamie, I think, is probably the only Amiga developer, in, maybe in the world, that is doing this full-time, thanks to us. <laughs> but we're killing ourselves. I own a business, Jeff has a job, and you know, there's life, there's wife, there's kids, you have a house, you know how it is, there's always something to work on, there's always something to fix. You guys at home, it's this, you know, this is the same scenario. So from the bottom of my heart, and I really mean this, I want to thank each and every one of you that are here, and I want to thank you folks at home that are watching. Thank you for sharing this precious little bit of time with us this morning. Thank you. Am I good? You are great. All right, fantastic. Questions? We'll be we'll be back there and uh, enjoy the rest of Annie West. I know we're we're going to enjoy it. And Trevor, just for the record, you're going to get you're getting a an interesting present this evening at the banquet. And of course, I have to say that in public because well, you'll find out. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Just like to make a couple of announcements. Oh, oh, excuse me, one, one second. I just, I just wanted to take a point out to on Aaron's uh, talking about time. I wanted to point out uh, specifically, kind of thank the guys that have contributed uh, to this. Uh, we we're talking about looking at the uh, text editor here. Uh, this is Simon Archer and Peter uh, Gordon. The guys created the uh, Rich Editor uh, gadget, which is used in uh, CodeBench. We licensed the use for it in NVD. Uh, it's a huge leap, it saves me six, eight months of development. Sure. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that you know, there's, there's, this is coming together uh, faster now, not just because of Meredith's contribution, because of other guys like them, you know, willing to share their stuff. Uh, also plugging in with uh, uh, the uh, debugger, the visual debugger part of this DB101 uh, project. I feel he's going to be, uh, he's got it out there, and he's going to be adding more stuff. So. so that's all. Okay. More, more later. Okay, great. Great. Thank you. A couple of announcements. Those of you who are exhibitors or members of the Sacramento Club, you have credentials waiting at the welcome table right now. Please do stop by and pick them up. Uh, for those who bought banquet tickets and have not yet received them, they are available at the welcome table. Please do stop by and pick them up. Uh, and uh, I forgot to introduce, uh, for those of you who have talked to me on email and don't know me, uh, my name is Brian Deneen, uh, and uh, thanks for coming to the show.